So there's been a lot of focus these last 12 months on growth stocks, and it makes a lot of sense. Capital gains have been phenomenal since the market crash of 2020. But just because you're enjoying those short term gains doesn't mean you shouldn't also be working on your long term portfolio. And one of the best long term investments are dividend stocks. Dividend stocks are super popular because they give you an income. Like you could be retired, sitting on the beach, not working and still earning an income from your dividend stocks. Like you could build up an entire portfolio of dividend stocks and never have to sell a single one of them. Just enjoy that sweet, sweet dividend income. So an explainer on dividends. Dividends are a portion of a company's earnings or profit that they choose to pay out to their shareholders. Not all companies do this. Some companies choose to reinvest their dividends um, into growth plans, like maybe a company has decided it's going to expand into overseas markets or it's releasing a new product, then it will probably reinvest most of its uh, profits back into the company. But some companies, those that particularly aren't growing as fast as they used to, choose to pay that out to shareholders in the form of dividends. These tend to be older, more well-established companies, and they're not doing a huge amount of growing. And so dividends can be seen as an incentive to keep shareholders interested, to keep them holding onto the stock. This is because when a company isn't doing a lot of growing, usually its share price isn't doing a lot of growing as well. Of course, this isn't always the case as we saw with GameStop recently, but it's a general rule of thumb. For example, here's a table that shows how much blue chip companies pay in dividends versus how much you can get in capital gains over 20 years. As you can see, in most occasions here, dividends either match capital gains or they outperform them. So for that reason, you can see that having a portfolio that is a mix of both growth stocks and dividend stocks is a really good idea. So dividends are paid out quarterly in the US, but here in Australia, for example, they're paid out twice a year. And usually it follows the company's latest profit report. Most companies all send their profit reports out at the same time. This is called earning season or reporting season sometime. And usually in that profit report, they'll tell you how much they're going to be paying in dividends. But to be eligible for your dividend, you'll need to be holding your shares up until what's called the ex-dividend date. Often you'll see share prices rising in the lead up to the ex-dividend date before dropping shortly afterwards. This is because some investors buy up stock to take advantage of the dividend payment and then they'll sell out afterwards or they're just in it to take advantage of the volatility, which often happens around the ex-dividend date. And in some countries like the US, there are also rules around how long you need to have held a dividend uh, stock for before you're eligible for the dividend. Um, for example, up to 60 days or 90 days is pretty common. So why are dividends king? Part of the big reason retirees and indeed even young people that aren't working love dividends is because they can give you a tax-free income. The tax rules around dividends are different in every country, so I won't go into details here. But in many countries, including the US and Australia, so long as your dividend stocks are held within a retiree fund of some kind in Australia, it's called a, a super fund or a, an SMSF and it's IRA in the US, then you won't need to pay tax on your dividends. This isn't the case if your dividend stocks are held outside of a retiree fund. You'd normally need to pay the same amount of tax that you'd pay on any amount of income that you get. And some of the time you even get additional tax benefits. For example, in Australia, we have something called uh, franking credits, which are paid out as an extra cash bonus on top of not having to pay any tax. For example, the millionaire Dick Smith made headlines when it was revealed that not only did he get over a million dollars worth of uh, dividend payments in one year, he also got franking credits of up to $500,000 dollars on top of not having to pay any tax on that. So if you ever wonder how the wealthy can stay wealthy without really having to do very much, well, dividend portfolios is one way. In fact, massive dividend portfolios can be passed down from generation to generation. For example, if you inherited a dividend portfolio that was bringing in, say, a million dollars in income a year, you could potentially live off that and then pass it down to your kids without ever having to sell a single stock. The caveat here, of course, is that dividends can go up or down depending on how much profit a company is earning. And different trends or different events can impact an entire sector. For example, bank stocks, which have been some of the hardest hit during COVID-19, were forced to cut down on dividend payments over the last 12 months. At the same time, technology and healthcare stocks were able to increase some of their dividends. So although you may not need to do a lot of buying or selling with a dividend portfolio, it's still important to hold a diversified portfolio of dividend stocks from different sectors. Okay, that's it from me. Don't forget to like and subscribe.